Welcome back. Now, Governor Palin, I want to follow up on some of this with China. Um, as you point out, China now has built these fake islands in the South China Sea and they've militarized it. Right. They're threatening Japan, certain islands. They're threatening the Philippines. The Vietnamese government's even asked us for help, so we, we uh, docked one of our warships in their ports. Nobody would have ever thought that would happen. China's stealing our technology left and right. They're forcing companies that do business in China to turn over our technology. The president seems to want to confront this and address this. But again, the media, Congress, uh, not so much. Mm -hmm. Well, out of those entities that you mentioned, maybe the president is the only one who's aware that uh, China is not even shy about their intentions, which is ultimately its world dominance. And China's even named their plan, and it's one the one road, one belt, you know, how, how they believe that they're going to control not just all the parts and pieces of things that the rest of the world needs to function, including um, materials for our own infrastructure, but also now China saying, oh, we're also going to control the way that the things that they manufacture are transported, and that's waterways, and that's uh, via land mass that ultimately covers two thirds of the world's population. Uh, maybe the president is the only one understanding what China's ultimate goal is, even though China's telling us pretty clearly. And he seems to be doing things prior presidents wouldn't do, and I mean in a very positive way. In other words, he's confronting China. He's confronting Russia, North Korea, the outrageous Iran deal. Yeah. And I could be wrong, I think he's going to kill it, and I think he should. Why do you think the Obama administration was at best passive and at worst contributory uh, to this kind of uh, really outrageous foreign policy. Right, well, uh, the Obama administration was full of those people who believe in globalization, that America is just like every other country. You know, we don't have anything special. We're not exceptional. We, our constitution uh, wasn't inspired by um, those things that time-tested truths prove will work. Um, no, we're just like everybody else. So they had to kind of diminish America's standings. I think I think that's the bottom line about that administration. But yeah, in the past, too many people have been beholden to special interests that actually profit from um, an agenda like the Obama administration was having us on. Uh, but yeah, as for the particulars there with um, North Korea and with that Iran deal, isn't it ironic that here under Bill Clinton, it was nukes for North Korea. And under um, Obama, you know, nukes in Iran. Under Hillary, it was our uranium being um, sold to uh, the, the Russians. And yet they are all claiming that it's uh, President Trump who wants to have a nuclear war. No, if anything, it was uh, past agendas that were based on special interests that have gotten us into the pickle that we're in, and that is um, kind of some diminished power of America that President Trump is trying to grow again for the right reasons. Do you like his recent appointments of Pompeo for state and Bolton as national security advisor? Um, I don't know either one personally, but reading a lot of uh, Bolton's uh, past work and what he is really a proponent of. I am thankful that he's all about, you know, U.S. sovereignty and, and power. I, I'm not the war hawk that maybe some people would think that, you know, our core Republican would be. And that's because I see what war does to an individual, to a family. Uh, war is hell and I don't want America to go to war and I believe in the old Reaganism that we can be we can show strength and then have peace um, and of course some criticism about Bolton is, is he is such a hawk but I believe that he is wise enough to know that uh, you know we'll exert our power only when necessary military power is the very last option. Well the Russians seem to be very nervous about it. 
So well, the Chinese. So that's Chinese. a good sign. Right, right, right. right. And, you know, it is Trump's team. He, he's the leader of the team, and he has every right and responsibility to have his team members around him. Which is the point. He'll make the final decision. Right. And people will do it. But, you know, I've known John Bolton for 30 years. You know, he was a union ambassador for a period of time. The Democrats blocked him from getting a permanent position. And he worked in the Reagan administration at the Department of Justice under Ed Meese. Uh, he worked in the Bush administration at the State Department and so forth. And all these attacks on him. I never remember him being a hothead. I never remember him wanting to go to war. You talk about make America great again and America first in terms of foreign policy. That's John Bolton. My response to you about, well, I hope he's not a war hawk. That's an example then of even someone very informed, someone obsessed with current events and history and politics, not knowing quite how to judge someone because too much of my judgment comes from what I see on TV and hear on the radio from others who want me and others to believe that he's not the right person. So, you know, it, it's a lesson too for all of us, for me, for everybody, to do our homework, to really uh, dive into these issues and these people and what they stand for um, before we do make judgments. Don't forget, folks, Levin TV every weeknight on 